Welcome back, everyone. This is the creative side of week 33. So we're going to cover those same 10 chapters, but this time I'm going to focus you in on a few key spots and then give you the creative tools that you would need if you wanted to teach these to your families, your classes, your peers. If you're a teenager and you're teaching other teenagers, I promise there's good stuff at your fingertips. Just remember, even though I'm giving you three new ones here, you can always go out and find more. I'm trying to create all of these object lessons with a bit of an evergreen feel so that you could use them throughout the year. Like, for example, you could teach the allegory of the olive tree this week if you didn't get a chance to teach it in Jacob 5, it fits really well with chapter 46. Or if you want to talk about apostasy and the kingmen kind of leaving the Nephites, you could do that apostasy can crush experiment from a few weeks ago and it would work great this week. I never expect you to do all three of these all the time. I just think I'm just stuffing your pockets with good ideas. Okay, let me give you a walkthrough of these object lessons and tell you the supplies you need and then I'll take into each one individually. Okay, first, we have to talk about being poisoned by degrees, right? How do you resist that? It's such a good part of this week's story. And it's especially applicable to teenagers because this is what Satan does, right? He loves to just subtly and sneakily get us to separate from God and separate from the covenant and separate from who we know we are. So I just think you... You want to put a light on this one. The supplies for this are actually really easy. This is one of my kids' very favorites. You just need a Ziploc bag. You can fill it with normal water or you could add just a drop of food coloring if you want. That just makes it easier for your class to see it. But if you're doing this indoors, then probably just clear water is your best. <laughs> then you're also going to need something to stab it with. So normally you do this with pencils, but I actually found this year when we tried it, I liked it much better with skewers because these are kind of like little tiny javelins and they're sharp and they go in fast. So I'm going to teach you how to use these in just a second. Okay, second one. We're going to talk about the idea of being like unto Moroni. I love Moroni, but Captain Moroni is just one of those incredible figures in scripture. And I think the more time we can spend helping our kids understand the full faceted nature of his character, the better. So this challenge is going to take a minute. I call this the uh, fire or faith and works escape room challenge. It's essentially a series of three clues that your kids are going to solve in order to escape, to find the verse that they're looking for. So on the printable this week, you're going to find this little packet that this is a, their packet of clues. And then they'll either work individually or in groups to try and solve the clues and figure out the mystery verse that teaches them about Captain Moroni. So for this one, you just need cardstock, paper, any of those things. Maybe scissors and glue might help, but you don't have to have the glue. It's just kind of a nice extra. Okay, third one. This is when we're going to talk about being no less serviceable. Thanks to Elder Bednar, we've all learned more about the value of people like Helaman and Corianton and Shiblon and Ammon and others, and how while Captain Moroni and Lehi and these other warriors are fighting from without, Helaman is fortifying from within. And I wanted to talk about how that works and why we need it. And this one, we're going to do Otter Pops. <laughs> I've never done an Otter Pops lesson, and as soon as the idea popped into my head, I'm like, oh, we're doing this. So you need standard Otter Pops. It doesn't matter what brand they are. They could be the generic brand. They're all pretty much the same size. They're about eight inches long and maybe an inch and a half across or so. And then you need the printable that goes with them because we're essentially going to turn these into swords. <laughs> so we're going to talk all about battles and why you need to be fortified from without and fortified from within. So the printable will give you a handle and then also this awesome sheath so you can teach your kids about the value of both. So grab a pack of Otter Pops. It's the end of summer. They should be on clearance and grab the printable and you'll be all set. Okay, and we're going to get into the details next. Satan is sneaky, you guys. Like You probably got this feel for me as you watched the sparks, but I just think he has these sinister, sneaky ways. And the more we can do to help our kids understand his tactics, the more defense they can put up, right? Like I think we are arming them with power when we help them understand the adversary. I don't think we have to fixate on him or his power, because frankly, the Lord will always trump it. But I do think it's helpful for them to see. One of the best examples you get in this week's scriptures is the story of Lahontai, when Amalekiah is trying to coax him off the mountain so that he can ultimately kill Lahontai and take his power. It's this very subtle, steady approach. So this object lesson is designed to help you teach that in a really visual way. And it's one of my favorites because it's so simple. You can throw it together fast. It don't, doesn't take any printables, nothing. It's, it's a quick one. To begin, you want to start with a bag, just like this. Like I said, if you want to make it more easy for your kids to see it, then you're going to want to add just a drop of food coloring. I wouldn't add a bunch of food coloring because if it gets on clothes or something, it might stain. But 
one drop gave me this much red. So that's kind of the idea. You're gonna fill up a Ziploc bag and seal it nice and tight across the top. If you're nervous or you're gonna give each of your kids one of these bags, you might get those slider style Ziploc bags just so you can be really sure that it's closed. <laughs> And then you're going to talk to them about the confidence that Lahontai has. When he starts, when he's up the mountain, he feels confident. He's out of the reach of Amalekiah. He's got his men with him and he feels steady. And then there's some interesting things that Satan does, right? Satan tries to make Lahontai feel comfortable. Basically, Lahontai asks, or Amalekiah asks Lahontai to come down three different times. He says, come meet with me. I don't mean any ill will. Just come meet with me. You know, it's just this subtle approach of the adversary. And Lahontai at first is really strong. And he says, no, I won't come down. Nope, I'm not coming down. We're staying up here. We don't want a part of this war. And then Satan does this tricky tactic through the means of Amalekiah. He basically, Amalekiah on his fourth attempt, Amalekiah comes up the mountain part of the way, almost outside of Lahontai's camp. He, he kind of crosses that gap. And then he sends a message to Lahontai and says, you can come with your guards. You don't need to be afraid, basically. He's saying, insulate yourself with whatever makes you comfortable. I am not a threat to you. And this is where you're going to start to demonstrate the story. So with this bag, you're now going to take skewers or very sharp pencils, if you have those on hand, and you're going to start to stab through the bag. You don't want to do it super slow. I would just have your kids slide it through. It's going to go through the front and then into the back of the bag. And you're going to do that over and over again. Maybe on the first or second stab, I would point out, what do you think should happen to this bag? You know, clearly, it's got a lot of water in it. It should spill. But somehow, that little stick doesn't make it leak. The, what's tricky about Satan's tactics is he likes to make you think you are safe. You know, you might approach pornography for the first few times and you don't really feel anything different. Nobody knows, nobody saw it, and so you feel safe. I really feel like that's what Lahonte felt when he finally did meet with Amalekiah and he came down the mountain. He felt safe. Because Malachi promised, oh, don't worry. I'm going to actually make you look really comfortable. You can surround my armies. Don't worry. You're going to tell that story and let your kids jab more and more skewers through that bag and talk about how that water stays. And what Satan loves to do is try to get you to fixate on that water and say, look, I'm just the same. Yes, I did these things, but nobody can tell. And I feel the same. And I'm doing this. I'm the same. What Lahonda doesn't realize until it's too late is that as soon as Satan has all those punctures in us, he slowly starts to remove them, sometimes rapidly starts to remove them. And that's what happens with Lahontai. As soon as Amalekiah has him in his clutches and he's got all these holes and this false sense of security, Amalekiah poisons him by degrees. And that's when you start to slowly pull out those pencils or those skewers and watch what happens, right? The water just pours out. It, it can't be stopped. There's nothing you can do to seal that bag back up again. You could have your kids try to hold the holes closed with their hands. It doesn't matter what you do. As soon as you pull those skewers out, the water flows. And that's what I think we want our kids to understand is that you are never in a position of safety when it comes to tangling with the adversary. You simply can't have wickedness be happiness. Wickedness can't be security. Wickedness can't be peace. Wickedness can't be strength. It is always something that is slowly breaking you down. And I think the Ziploc bag does a great job of teaching it. Fair warning, you guys. I'm in the middle of planning a gigantic scavenger hunt type party for people. So um, clues are on my brain. If you haven't already felt that from the revelation puzzle last week, this week will be evidence of that. Because I created essentially an escape room challenge to help you learn about Moroni. This is something I love because of how you approach an escape room. So when you get into class, talk to the kids in your class about what happens when you walk into an escape room. You know that there is a way out. You also know that it's going to be hard to figure that out. But if you go in an escape room with the assumption that the planners didn't do a good job and there's probably no way to solve it, then you're defeated from the get-go. What I like about Moroni is that he seems to approach every obstacle with this escape room mentality. He basically comes to a problem and he assumes there is a solution. He's a lot like Nephi in that way. He trusts that the Lord knows what he's doing and that there is a way through. That might take a long time. It might take a lot of effort. It might take some strategies that no one's ever made before. But if he will just stick it out and stay close to the Lord, he'll have the help he needs and he'll be able to escape. And that's, what I, that's why I created the escape room clues. So on the printable, 
You're gonna see this outer shell. This is just to hold all the pieces of your three clues. On the front, there is a challenge to find the chapter, the book, the chapter, and the verse of a key verse about Moroni. That's what you're trying to solve as you solve this riddle. On the back, you have some QR codes where you could watch the Book of Mormon video about Moroni, watch those 10 minutes, maybe pull out some of the character traits that you see in Moroni and talk to your class about them. And then use the clues to teach the rest of your lesson. Because the clues are kind of designed to help you understand what Moroni did for the people. So the first clue that they're gonna open looks like this. I would have them all stashed in the envelope. They don't even have to be sorted. Your kids will figure it out. But the first one has these indecipherable letters. Like they don't make sense. Nothing about it makes sense. And your kids, your kids will struggle to understand what to do with it. But then they'll notice that on the bottom, there's this black text that if you lay it all out flat, you can read. And it tells you to build fortifications, which is what Moroni was great at, right? He came up with cool ways to build forts to protect his people. So after some wrestling, your kids will start to figure out that this needs to be 3D, that they're combining these things. They'll see the little scissors icons on the printable, and they'll know that they're supposed to cut something. They'll troubleshoot and try and figure out a way to make these four papers into a fort. And as they do, they'll start to see patterns. They won't recognize the text on the outside walls, but they'll start to realize that the ones in the corners match. If they've got those numbers on the corners lined up, you'll see a letter in every single corner of that fortification, and that word spells Alma. You'll have A-L-M-A -A on every corner of the fortification, and now they'll know their book. So that's when they get their envelope, their right book, very right, Alma in that book section on the title of Liberty there, and you move on to clue number two. So clue number two is a little harder. It's probably the hardest of all the three. This, it looks like this. You're, these are a series of folds that your kids are gonna make. They follow the guide, and then they match some symbols in order to form these papers into number-like shapes. They're gonna be specific numbers, almost like what you would see on a calculator. So I would just remind you, like as you're going through these clues, I deliberately made them hard. I wanted your kids to do these in teams or to have to like troubleshoot and worry. My goal is not to be able to hand this to a 10 year old and have them solve it in three minutes. I want it to be hard. So I made these clues challenging, but if they follow the instructions and they turn to you for guidance and you give them hints here and there, they'll see that these little slips of paper can form two numbers, right? They can form a four and they can form an eight. Now it's tempting to think that must be 84. But if they go on their scripture app, they'll see that there is no chapter 84 in Alma. So that means it must be Alma chapter 48. So now they have the second spot filled in on their clues. The third one is a little simpler, but also a cool different kind of challenge. So this one looks like this. You have faith and works and these little flags. And you're going to use those flags to help you know how to connect the dots. These dots on these cards are going to form two numbers. This will give you the verse number. But in order for you to figure out which one is which, you have to follow the pattern on the top. So I'm giving you all the answers here, hoping that you'll know how to solve it, and then you'll be able to guide your kids through it. But even my kids struggled, right? They didn't make a perfect one or a perfect seven. They had to kind of troubleshoot a little bit. But after you get it figured out, you have a one and you have a seven, and it can either be verse 71 or verse 17. But if they go in there gospel library app, they can see that in the 48th chapter, there is no verse 71. So that's when they know, oh, it must be 17. So by the end, they can read that incredible verse all about Moroni, about how if all men were like Moroni, then the powers of hell would be shaken. And my hope is that you can talk about what that looks like. How does the Lord equip us to be like Moroni? How does he promise that we have all the tools at our disposal to be conquerors in our life? We're going to struggle. We're going to wrestle. We're going to have to be creative, just like Moroni did. But the promise is sure. If we follow God's plan, if we make covenants and we keep them and we listen to his advisors, then we will have the help we need and we will escape. That's the promise. One of my favorite parts of this week's study happens in chapter 49. That's when in the first battle, earlier in the chapters, the Nephites win because they've got this awesome armor and the Lamanites basically have nothing other than the offensive weapons, and so they fall in battle. By the time you get to chapter 49, they've learned a little bit and they make their own armor that looks a lot like the Nephites, and they come with bigger numbers, so they assume they're going to win. And they don't win. Even though they're in the exact same armor and they got bigger numbers, they don't win. Because the Nephites have something that the Lamanites don't have. And I think we learn what that is in the verses you learn that they have people working among them who are no less serviceable. This is that beautiful verse that Elder Bednar pointed out to us, you know, about Helaman and Shiblon and Corianton, who was the one we were worried about a couple weeks ago, right? This, this, they are these mighty men of God who aren't picking up weapons. They are fighting from within. They're teaching the word of truth so that 
the Nephite people actually are strong from within and they can withstand everything that comes their way. These armies of the Nephites don't just have awesome armor, they have covenants. They have promises of power and protection because of the righteous lives that they're leading. And that's what I want my kids to understand, that even though they might look similar or even outnumbered by their enemies, they are not the same within. And that's where the power comes. So there's a simple way to demonstrate this. I created it with Otter Pops just because it was the end of summer. And I'm like, we got to have one, one last little thing before we shift into fall. So with these Otter Pops, you're going to make swords. But I would make half of them floppy on purpose. So don't let your Otter Pops freeze. Just put them on the shelf in your pantry. And they'll look like this, right? They're this adorable little sword, little handle that you attach to the Otter Pop. And then you're going to give your kids some kind of challenge in class. So for example, you could give your kids the challenge of like have a bunch of balloons just blown up and then give them the challenge to use the points of their sword to keep the balloon in the air. And then you're going to give some kids an Otter Pop that's frozen with a sword inside. Like I would hand them all out just like this. There's four different styles you can choose from. I would hand them all out like this and have half of them be floppy and room temperature and half of them be frozen. And then tell them, okay, you have to use your sword. You can't use the sheath. And now I want you to keep that balloon aloft. And the kids who have the floppy swords will notice really quickly that they can't keep the balloon up. Or if they do, it's kind of a sloppy, ugly way to do it, right? It's not, they won't be as successful as the kids who have the frozen one. The ones who are frozen are firm, they're steadfast, they're immovable. And so they can control the sword. They can make it do what they want it to do. And then I would just simply relate that back to what we see in this week's study. This is what Alma and his brothers or his sons do. They teach the word because what they do is they're trying to invite people to strengthen from within. It's one thing to have armor, even good armor. It's another thing to be strong inside. And if you're strong inside, then you can do incredible things for God. And then I would relate what the freezer is, right? In order for this Otter Pop to stay strong, I've got to get it back in the freezer, right? If you were passing these out in class, they'll probably melt by 15 minutes into class and your kids will recognize really fast that in order for these to stay strong, I've got to keep putting them back in the freezer. And what does that represent in our life? I think in the verses, you see people like Helaman teach about covenants. You see them teach about worship, about fasting and prayer and study. Those are things that we do to kind of put ourselves back in the freezer, to keep us keep ourselves strong. And that's what gives us the power that we need to accomplish what is needed, right? I just think you want to talk about that work. And then if you want to, you could scan the QR code on the swords and read the talk from Elder Bednar about being no less serviceable. Because your kids are going to have situations where they feel like their work doesn't matter, or their callings are so small, or the, the difference they can make is so insignificant. But what Elder Bednar teaches is those little moments, those little callings, that's what allows people to become firm and steadfast and immovable. They change you over the course of time. And that's what happens to these brothers in arms as well. You need both. You need men like Moroni who fortify cities from without. And you need men like Helaman to fortify people from within. And when those two forces combine, God can do amazing things with you. Thanks for being here, you guys. That's it for week 33. See, I told you you're going to love the war chapters. They're just so cool. Okay, I hope you dive into the sparks, learn cool new things, ask good questions, and then try an object lesson or two and see what this week holds in store for you. I promise there's good things on the horizon. Just remember, if you need extra help with the insights or you're having questions with the chapter, come find me over at gather.macmom.com. That's the community-based site where I house the course. It's where you can access all the printables and the notes if you're a paid subscriber. But even if you're a free subscriber, you can come join me on the live. You can ask questions or even send me a direct message if you have something that you're stewing over. So I hope you enjoy it. Remember, the live happens at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, Monday mornings. And then it's posted right afterwards so that you can watch it anytime. Also, if you're not part of the course or subscriptions are not a thing for you, you're more than welcome to find the printables from this year over in my Etsy shop. So I usually link them right below the YouTube video in the description, or you can just go over to Etsy and search MacMom and, and they'll pop up for you. Whether you want these object lessons or ones that we've done in weeks past, I promise there's plenty of tools to help you teach this gospel creatively so that your eyes light up when you teach and your kids are excited to come join you. I promise it's possible, and I'm hoping to give you as many tools as I can to help make that happen. Enjoy this week of study, you guys, and then come on back because week 34 is all about the Stripling Warriors and it's what this course was named after. So you guys, you got to come back for week 34. I'll see you on Monday. <laughs>